what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on something very important when we do consultations or when we take consultations from somebody today's topic is very fundamental in approaching an astrologer the topic is how to approach an astrologer what questions to ask him when should we approach an astrologer all these queries regarding consultations because if we are not in the right mood the right attitude towards the consultation when we are asking questions then it is very likely that we will not benefit from them when i say we will not benefit i do not mean that their predictions will go wrong i simply mean to say that whatever good advice they give us we will not be able to hear it if we are not grateful for the information that he has given us or grateful for the knowledge that he or she has shared with us therefore before beginning god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there and if you are new to the channel then subscribe to it and if you like this video then like press the like button and share it with others all right so before discussing about what questions to ask to an astrologer we should first decide when should we go to an astrologer or uh, yes but when i say when i do not mean any specific time period of your life you can go to him or her at any time but when i say when it means what is the situation of your mind are you in a mental state are you in a proper mental disposition to hear whatever the astrologer has to say because if you go with a unclean mind with a mind which is not in a position to be receptive to what the senior astrologer is telling you then it will be a waste of time you will simply lose your money that's all nothing else is going to happen because when we approach an astrologer it is very important that we give him the liberty to speak whatever he wants not that we just simply want to hear what we want to hear and we want him to tell that yes you are planning this yes you are right that may be the case sometimes but it is not necessary that all the time it will be the case he may not speak what we want to hear in fact he may speak exactly the opposite of what we do not want to hear okay that means he may speak things which we do not like therefore whenever we are in a mood or in a situation where we feel the need to go to an astrologer first of all we should make sure that <coughs> even if the person is telling exactly that which i don't want to hear i will still be able to hear it and not tell that astrology is negative or that astrologer gives negative predictions that is very wrong on your part because astrology is simply a tool what if tomorrow the doctor says that your your wife or your husband is going to die of a terminal disease well then what do you do you will say oh medical industry is negative <laughs> negativity is not there in astrology or in the doctor or in the astrologer it is there in this world because that is why lord krishna says dukhalaya mashashpatam in the bhagavad gita that this world is a source of misery and how to gain happiness is to look to him and go beyond this world to the divine god and then you will attain ultimate happiness so <clears throat> if somebody is expecting only good things in this world then i am sorry to say the gita does not sanction that <laughs> that means that whenever we approach an astrologer and see we will never approach an astrologer when everything is fine right <laughs> when everything is good you are earning money in hundreds thousands lakhs millions billions trillions when you are having the best relationship of the world when you are at the finest of your health you won't approach an astrologer 
when will you approach when you are in difficulty in things related to your kendra houses either your home property or your marriage or your career or your health one four seven ten right we may also approach for children or father or whoever but these four areas are prominent the first fourth seventh and the tenth houses that means whenever we are undergoing difficulty if we feel the need to approach an astrologer it is a very strong indication that there is already problem in our life so if we go to the astrologer and tell him or force him or we behave in a way for example if we ask such questions oh i am not getting a job i will get na till one year we should not ask these kind of questions because when you ask like this that i will get na till one year of course you may be very innocent and you may be like a child and you may ask like that or if suppose you are in a relationship and the relationship is not going that great you should not ask the astrologer oh i will get married na to this person because then what you what happens when you ask like that the astrologer feels obliged to say a yes to you and then like i have seen in most of the experiences in my case whenever a person will ask you questions like this reaffirming then 90% of the times i would not say 100 i would say 80 to 90% of the times it doesn't turn out that way it turns out exactly the opposite for example if you are having a difficulty in a relationship that means the difficulty is there so if you ask the astrologer oh it will be good na in one year then what do you expect the astrologer to say because apart from astrology the strongest indication of our karma is what is actually happening to us in our life in our day to day life and especially if you have never faced difficulty in life not when i say difficulty i don't mean any difficulty but if you have not faced major difficulties major struggles major setbacks and <clears throat> now you are facing something irrespective of your age then you should be very careful in deciding of whether you should go to an astrologer and ask consultations because sometimes when i see when people take consultations from me their behavior is such that it hinders me from giving them a reply which i want to give them and if you are asking again and again and again the same question this is something very bad <laughs> we should avoid doing it because then the astrologer reaches a point of saturation for example if you are doing a consultation or you are taking a consultation from an astrologer if you are asking one question and he is saying that okay this is what i have seen and i have told you and if you are asking him again can you tell me more about this no whatever he knows he have already told so there is no point in asking another question twice all right if the prediction is wrong that's a different issue you can go and ask him sir uh, you told like this it didn't happen then can you now tell me when is the next time period it can happen because many a times when people ask me when will i get married i do not give the date of marriage i simply say in the near future when is the strongest time for marriage and i also tell in my consultations that if you do not get married during this time after i match the jaimini dasha system vimshottri dasha system yogini dasha system and some special dasha systems which are applicable for some special horoscopes without that i do not give a blind prediction based on one dasha or one transit i try to match all the systems together and then i give the prediction now what happens is when you say that the nearest time is this okay suppose i say that for a person in the in uh, starting from january 2019 to december 2019 is a strong time to get married and suppose he doesn't get married at that time i tell them that if you don't get married then you contact me i will check the next possible best time for marriage and after that if you again ask me can you please tell me when this will happen because let me tell you there is no way you can find the date of marriage in astrology there is no date parashara has not given any such date you can do research on thousand horoscopes okay if this time period is running this transit is happening then this will happen this will these are probable time periods but there is no yes no answer here there is no way by which you can figure out the date of marriage 
even if you figure out it will still be an approximation all right so do not ask the date of marriage simply ask when is the next strongest time to get married and even if you don't get married something related to relationships will happen either if you are single you will get into a new relationship or if you are committed and if you had a breakup then it may be possible that you get back with the same person again or you get into another person but that does not necessarily mean that you will get married because parashara has not given any technique if you do not believe me then go and search in the universe if you find tell me also <laughs> i'll be most happiest to know it that's why whenever we are asking if the astrologer has given one answer we should not ask the question again because he has already told i have seen some people when they will go to astrologers they will ask okay do i have this then the astrologer will say okay maybe this much is there and he will again ask this is not right because you are forcing the astrologer to say something which he doesn't know or which he doesn't want to tell you depending on your behavior because sometimes your behavior is such as i said earlier it will inhibit us from giving you a true prediction and that means you are causing only trouble for yourself so if i have to summarize the first part is very simple whenever you are confident of the fact that whatever the astrologer tells me i am able to take it either it is good or bad i have that much mental stability only then go to an astrologer because the very fact that you are going to an astrologer with a question means that there is a doubt in your mind and that doubt has a very serious and a very strong probability that what you are planning may not happen so 90% of the time whenever people come to me with a doubt the answer is no actually <laughs> to be very honest because that is why he has come to me he or she <laughs> otherwise the person will not come to me if he is suppose the marriage is going fine there are some issues then you don't go to an astrologer because every marriage will has some issues or the other but if you are having serious issues my god you are not able to talk to each other you cannot tolerate each other only then you go to an astrologer and ask that oh sir please tell me will this marriage work so if there are already so much problems then how do you expect that there will be suddenly no problems that when the astrologer says yeah time is difficult then you go and say that oh astrology is negative astrology is useless it only creates fear no, that is not right because i said tomorrow the doctor can say that your child or your mother or your spouse he or she can have a terminal disease and they may die well what will you do that time one day you may get the news that you are going to die and everybody is going to die one day so it is very important that we go to the astrologer in a right frame of mind that is the first point number 2 is what questions should we ask to an astrologer first is when you should go okay you know that now second is what questions should you ask well you can ask questions whatever you want i am not talking of those questions okay when will this happen when will that happen the first question you should ask to an astrologer the first question tell me what wrong did i did to whom because of who which i have taken birth in this life tell me please for god's sake for the sake of the heavens please tell me please 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 tell me what wrong did i do to whom because of whom i have taken birth because of that activity that may not be one that many that, that may be many that may be thousand million activities which you have done wrong because of which i have been forced to take birth again in this world all right because if you would have not done anything wrong you would have not taken birth here is it understood whoever you are you may be the most beautiful person you may be the most richest you may be the most intelligent but the very fact that you have taken birth here that means you have some sinful karmic balance remaining which you have to pay back in this life without which you cannot do it away <laughs> so please ask him this question because when you ask him you will know what wrong you did and how do you know that just see where the maximum affliction is where is saturn placed where is rahu placed these two planets will give you a very strong indication of where your sinful karma is 
if they have any associations with Venus. I have seen time and time and time and time and again Venus linked with Saturn Rahu, terrible relationships. Aspected or conjunct or <laughs> or if they are sitting in each other's signs. Even then I have seen. For example, if Venus is in Capricorn and Saturn is exalted in Libra. Even then I have seen difficult relationships. Or if Saturn Venus is aspecting each other. Or even if Saturn is alone aspecting Venus, because Saturn can aspect Venus from third, uh, from uh, the third aspect and the ten and the tenth aspect also. You understand. <laughs> and also Mars will give us an indication. Especially these three planets, Saturn, Mars, Rahu, they are very good in giving indications. For example, Rahu will tell us which are the areas that we cheated on somebody. Mars will tell us which are the areas we created violence. For example, if Mars and Rahu are sitting together, it might mean that we did some cheating related to property or we cheated our brothers because Mars represents property and brothers. So that means you know that in this life there will be some issues pertaining to your brother or if Venus is with Rahu or Saturn. Generally Venus Rahu what happens? The person the, the, uh, it is seen that uh, the opposite sex can sexually exploit you and then promise you that oh we will get married and then later he goes away from his work. Now you may say okay all men are cheap they are cheating us all men are liars all men are cheaters no it is not like that if a woman says like that I understand that her Venus is linked with Rahu because Rahu is that cloud that smoke the cheating Rahu is just giving you what you did to others so if a woman has cheated her paramours her lovers her husbands in previous lifetimes then then this this lifetime they will come back to cheat you do not think that you can escape you simply cannot escape wherever Rahu Ketu is that is a part where you do not have free will if you try to go and do remedies let me tell you it doesn't work Rahu Ketu remedies will not work when I say it doesn't work, I do not mean that it can not work at all, but it will still give the effect. Whichever gemstone you wear, whatever you do, unless you take to spirituality, that is the only remedy for Rahu Ketu, I am telling you. Because they show the terrible sinful actions that we have performed in our past. And simply Saturn, similarly Saturn, Saturn will show those areas where we have given pain, sorrow to others. Saturn and Venus, we have given sorrow to women or to the opposite sex in the past lives. So this life, we will get the same. Saturn and Mars linked with Venus. We have given sorrow and also violence because Mars is also the significator of violence. That means this life, those things will happen to us. Either we like it or we don't. <laughs> Unless you take to spirituality and then the karma is nullified unless you do that but 99% of the public cannot do that which means they suffer so when we go to an astrologer these are the first questions we should ask please tell me what wrong did I did to whom because of whom I have taken birth here and what are the things that I need to take care in this life because if you are Saturn is afflicting Venus then you can have multiple breaks in relationships before the age of 30 35 which means if those things are happening then you should actually be grateful because your negative karma is going am I right <laughs> because anyways you were destined to suffer in some way or you will suffer in matters of luxury because Venus is also luxury or in matters of the opposite sex so you should actually be grateful that oh now my negative karma is going so if you do not ask these questions if you simply keep asking when will I get money when will I get married well let me tell you that <laughs> you will anyways get married if you are supposed to get married <laughs> is it understood the day you are destined to get married, you will get married that day exactly at that moment. 
either you know it by astrology or you do not so asking when you will get married is actually useless <laughs> it it is not useless entirely for example if you have certain plans that okay you want to pursue this career path which will take me three more years or should i get married now that it might happen that for the next 20 years there is no date of marriage it is there after two years so better you get married now so in those ways we can use astrology to help ourselves but if you are not destined to get married you go to a thousand astrologers they may give you a thousand dates your age may be 48 58 but you will not get married if that is not destined you cannot change that all right similarly when you will get promotions now i am not telling do not ask this now i am not telling that don't ask when will i get a job or where can i do good this area or that area i am not saying do not ask those questions but before all this first question is to be asked tell me why i was born what wrong did i do what are the backlogs that i need to clear in this life because if it is related to mars then you have to be very respectful towards your brothers if it is venus go and do good to women if it is jupiter you have jupiter rahu conjunction my god <laughs> you have cheated your guru in past life that is why this life the people you meet as gurus may be fake they may exploit you they may take money from you they may sexually exploit you many scandals come out these days of gurus exploiting women sexually well they may exploit you but the point to be noted is you were the one who did something because of which it is happening to you because there are so many women not everybody get exploited there are so many men not everybody get cheated monetarily by some guru or by some astrologer why are only you getting cheated because you had done something in past lives and now it is time to pay back all right therefore please ask these questions so that you can know where you did wrong take caution and expect the unexpected expect the unexpected expect the things that you do not expect to happen in those areas and the third thing to ask is how can i improve my life not monetarily <laughs> monetarily also you can ask but how can i improve my life how can i improve my mental state how can i improve spiritually what spiritual practice is good for me how can i go close to god where which path which way will give me fulfillment in spiritual life which way will give me direction how can i improve on the level of a soul not only as as a monetary way not only in the way of relationships but how can i improve as a soul that is perhaps the most important question to be asked so there you go if you do not ask that question the entire consultation is useless i am telling i am telling you today if you are watching this video you have simply wasted your time and money <laughs> the astrologer is in, uh, not, not lost because he has got the money from you and that's his dharma he you do something and you give him the money but you lost everything because what is the use of knowing the second part the second part i said why you came here what wrong did you do what are the negativities in your life what are these where are the sinful areas in your life what is the use of knowing all this if you do not know how to improve them and that you will know only if you ask the third question first question has to be asked to yourself am i ready to hear or listen whatever he says even if he says that which i do not want to hear second is go and ask him what i did wrong why i have taken birth and the third is how can i improve spiritually which spiritual path is best for me which mantras should i chant which dt which demigod should i go how can i best approach spirituality which is best for me is it best for me to read the scriptures myself in a lonely place or should i go to a spiritual organization and sit with people together and read of course you can do both but depending on an individual's horoscope the specifics can vary all right and how to improve myself so if you 
are clear of these three things only then you go number one am i ready to hear whatever he says and number two tell me why i have taken birth what are the pending karmas that i have and number three is how can i improve my spiritual life or at least how can i take to spirituality <laughs> improvement comes only if you do something right <laughs> <laughs> if you are not doing anything at all there is no question of improvement then you should ask what should I start how should I start which direction should I go and I will give proper guidance as per my experience in this domain and whichever people have asked these questions to me I can tell you honestly they have been very happy after taking consultation from me and those however who has not asked they are miserable <laughs> Because I know what they will do. After me, they will go to another astrologer. They will again pay them 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 100 euros, 200 euros. And what they will do after that? Again, after that, they will go to another astrologer. So they are just wasting their money by going to one people, one astrologer after the other. Because they are not getting to hear what they want to hear. All right. So that means they are not happy with me. And they will not be happy with any other astrologer also. Whoever he is, he may be Ken Rao sir or he may be Sanjay Rath or whoever he is, he will never be able to satisfy you because you are not going to an astrologer. You are only going to a person expecting to hear what you want. Okay. So that is it from my side. If you have any questions, queries or comments, then please send me in mail. If you want a personal consultation, then message me in WhatsApp. And then we will schedule an appointment. And generally, if you have any questions, apart from your horoscope, there is no possibility of giving an answer particular to one's horoscope if you post it in the comments because I do not know where every planet is placed. Just because your Saturn is in the fourth house, if you ask me, oh, is my karma related to property or mother bed? I am sorry, I cannot answer that question because I need to check the whole horoscope. When I said Saturn, Rahu and Mars, I just gave some examples. What if your moon is in the 8th house? <laughs> what if your Venus is in the 6th house? What if your Jupiter is in the 12th house? Then what? There you go. What if your sun is sitting with Saturn? <laughs> so for personal queries, please send me in the mail for personal consultations. And then I will arrange an appointment and then talk with you personally. Okay. Until next time, wish you all the best and I hope you take these three points into consideration whenever you think of going to an astrologer and whenever you finally decide that I will go to an astrologer. Okay. Until next time, wishing you good luck. Bye-bye. See you.